this is a guy that you know had a chance to win. I mean, he's one of the best guys in the country, and right. uh, and and you and you your heart goes out to a guy like that. I mean, no one works harder than Jermaine, and right. I and I mean no one, not at Caulfield. I'm saying there's not a person that can can physically work harder than this guy. He 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 wants it more than anybody you'd ever talk to. Money grow, huh? Oh, really real. Tell me how you really feel. Keep it Uncle Phil. Do you kill like a Navy SEAL? Rolling off a pill. Very trill. You ain't got a deal. Do you really still rob the stove? All right. So for beginners, before I can even talk to y'all about my JUCO life, I have to first talk to y'all about what actually got me to JUCO. And overall, what got me to JUCO was the fact that I was literally just an idiot. Just the dumbest! And when you do stupid things, you tend to put yourself in stupid situations, which tends to have stupid stuff happen, and you would end up looking stupid. I was really under the impression that I could just run as fast as I possibly could, and D1s would still take me, no matter how bad my grades are, SAT score, all of that. Like, I just didn't think all of that mattered in high school. I just thought all you had to do was be fast. And the NCAA was looking at me just like, <laughs> Yeah, but basically what I'm saying is that I really took no time at all to focus on myself academically, like, whatsoever. I don't remember doing homework. I don't even remember what I even learned in high school, to be honest with you. Like, if you ask me one thing about what I learned in high school right now, all I'd be able to tell you is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That's it. The only thing I really truly learned in high school is that it's something wrong with me. I was that dude to where I did not show up to school till 12 o'clock, and when I showed up, I had my little McDonald's bag, y'all. Hey, what up, baby? Oh, what up, look, baby? It's hey. Hello. Excuse me, where have you been? Where I been? Yes, where have you been? I'm getting some food, obviously. Are you late? Because I was getting some sleep. What you mean? Hey, so you over asking me all the time. Enjoy my food. I'm calling your father. The more important question is, why are you worried about it? Yeah, exactly. I don't know either. Thank you. Anyway, okay. This may cause a lot of you guys to ask me the question of, well, Jermaine, if you were giving no time to your academics, what exactly were you doing all day? Uh. Because usually people will end up having to go to a JUCO because they have bad grades, due to the fact that they just weren't paying attention in class or they weren't even coming to class. You would then ask them, okay, what was distracting you in the first place? Like, what were you doing with your time? And they'll be able to tell you, girl, if I'm ugly, drugs. Well, that is so ghetto. Just partying. with the motherfucking dog. Just lazy. No, that was none of that was me. You know, you know what I was doing. Do you really want to know? What I was doing that caused me to not even want to go to school class and ended up putting me in Juco. Do you really want to know? Shut your stupid mouth and just tell them already, stupid. It's so crazy. You see, there's this thing called a PS4, right? It's called a game console, and then you tend to, you know, play with other people. And there's also this thing called Black Ops 3 that dropped in 2015. They want to spawn over here for what? There's fire, fire, yeah, buddy, die. UAV on. And then there's also this thing called a Grand Theft Auto to the 5, you know? Oh my god, he's gone with it. <laughs> Jermaine killed <laughs> Those two games right there, they are the biggest reason as to why I did nothing in high school. When I tell you all I did was go to school at 12, practice at like 3 until like 4, leave at 5. I'm doing my little extra work and all that. Just I'm trying to be great. Because when it came to athletics, I'm putting all that extra energy in, but when it came to academics, there's no, there's no energy at all. I'm talking, my academics was sitting over there like Goku, give me some of your energy, yeah. And I was just like, nah, nah, bro, you just gonna have to die. I mean, so I'm getting all my athletic work done, and as soon as I got home, I'm on the game. And I'm talking, I'm on the game till two or three o'clock in the morning. I'm not sleeping. Like my eyes playing the game were so bloodshot, like I really looked like a Terminator. You heard, I have the tiger. Well, I have the Terminator. That was me. And let some. Let somebody call me while I'm playing the game and watch what happens. You don't want me to answer. If I answer, you're going to get somebody that's acting totally unusual. Like, yeah, I'm in there. Yeah, I'm in there. Yeah, yeah, come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in there. I'm in there. Yeah. Man, man what? Man, what? What? Bro. Hello? I'm fighting for my fucking life! What? I'm about to die. You're dying? I'm about okay, to call. be deceased! Okay, call 911. Don't call me, right? That's crazy, man. What am I gonna do? Save you? No. I'm too busy. I'm trying to save my game. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Because, you know, most people, like, when they say, like, oh, you know, I was slacking in high school. I wasn't doing this, that, and third. You think that they were hanging out with, like, cool kids and they going to do cool people stuff. No. I'm playing video games all day and all night. Day and night. With my nerve friends. 
my nerd friends Lee would call me throughout the day and say, Charger Jermaine, the services are needed on Minecraft. And I would look at them and be like, copy, however, and get on the game. You are ugly. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like that's something I probably should not have admitted on YouTube and I might edit that out, but I might not just because I'm stupid. Basically, anything that was of actual importance that was actually gonna move me in a forward direction, that was gonna move me in a positive direction in life, I didn't do it all. Every negative thing that was gonna move me in a downward spiral toward destruction though, and move me backward, I did all of it. Get a load of this thing. I was a straight idiot, but my athletic life though, let me tell you, I'm talking, I'm in that mug working. I was like Rocky off of Rocky 3 after he got beat up by Clubber Lang. I'm talking, I'm, you could put me in a montage. I'm doing extra roll run, push ups. Wait, I'm working for basically nothing because I didn't end up going to college initially, but it was also for something because they gave me a great work ethic just in the athletic department and not the academic department. But, you know, I put, I ended up getting together in JUCO. We're gonna get to that later. I mean, as time has progressed on at this point, I begin to speak with my counselors and they're basically telling me, Jermaine, your GPA does not show that you're going to even be able to go into college. And I'm just sitting over here like, oh, what? What? I am the real deal, holy field. At the sign, I never yield because like a banana, I'm always peeled because it gets real in the field and my fate is already sealed. Please tell me you're just playing stupid and you're not actually stupid. <laughs> so I'm just ignoring all advice, teachers, parents, everybody's really telling me the same thing. My school counselors are really just looking at me like, oh, Jermaine, you mean to tell me that in a NCAA where it's required to have a 2.3 GPA, you think that with your one GPA, you're going to be able to still get into the school, even though it's required that you have a 2.3 GPA? Like, there's no exception? Um, yeah, duh, I'm fast. Like, what are you talking about? Why are we even having this conversation? I don't know either. Okay. Lord have mercy, he wasn't playing. He's actually stupid. That kind of insinuates and implies that that was a GPA in high school that I did not attempt. <laughs> I'm a much better individual now, okay? Like, I vividly remember having a conversation with my dad and he was just looking at me like, like unless you're gonna run track for the military, you're gonna be running from bullets because um, I don't know how you about to get into college. And I'm just like, bro, just chill out. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna just run, I'm gonna get to do my thug fizzle, make it sizzle and the coaches don't come for shizzle, you feel me? Somebody take his mouth away. <laughs> Did I really just say that? We get to the track season portion of the school year, the portion of the school year where I actually begin to come to school more and more frequently because I have practice. <laughs> So I begin to practice, I'm getting kind of cold. Like I had a cool little indoor season, you know. I won a few Big River 400 events, you know, just just, just regular indoor stuff. I wasn't gonna have to touch much money. But that's beside the point. Overall, we get to outdoor season. And like our first outdoor meet, I think I popped like a 48.7. And okay, I understand you people in Texas affording all that, y'all be sitting over there like a 48.7. I was like, oh my gosh, like 48.7. But to me in the Midwest, that mess was kind of fast my senior year, okay? So don't judge me, all right? I'm not that fast, but I'm fast, all right? Don't. Don't do that. Leave me up. As a matter of fact, leave me up. Wait, you guys are y'all so rude. Anyways, I got to the point. So after I popped that, I was talking to, I think I was talking like Eastern Illinois, SIU Carbondale. And they were really interested. Like we over here, hit it off. I'm, a, I'm on the phone. I'm just, I'm just, hello, hello, hello. I'm, I'm feeling like that guy. I'm out here feeling like Junie Cortez off a game over three. I begin to, you know, everybody knows the high school when everybody begins to peep that you're going D1, you kind of become that man for real because not only they recognize, oh, he's cold, oh, he's going somewhere with it. Because in St. Louis, not a lot of people go somewhere with talent because I mean, St. Louis is a dead city, but it's beside the point. So I'm at a place now to where I'm talking to coaches long enough to where they begin to ask me the actual important questions because they recognize, okay, he has good character, he has good talent, he's a cool dude, he'll fit on the team, this, that, and the third. That's nice and all, but, um, <laughs> what that GPA about though, you know what I'm saying? What that GPA is, and I'm just sitting over here like, <laughs> GPA, <laughs> I was hoping y'all was going to that, you know what I'm saying? I'll be on the phone with the coach, and as soon as they ask me my GPA is. Oh uh, yeah, uh, can I speak to Jermaine? Yeah, this coach. Yeah, um, we just got your transcripts, and like I saw the number on your, when it comes to your GPA, and that just, that doesn't seem like a possible number because it just can't be that low. So I just wanted to ask you firsthand, What's your GPA, son? Uh, <laughs> uh, coach, yeah, um, my GPA just so happens to be. Can you guys work with that? Um, um, 
I'm sorry. Wait a second. Wait a second. I'm sorry. You you said a you said a, a, a what? A, a a what? Oh. One more time, one more time. I just need clarity. You said a what? A what? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Coach? Coach? Hello? Hello, Coach? Fifth one. Fifth one this week. I became the biggest waste of time to any coach talking to me. They would either hang up on me immediately. Or they would just talk to me for a second and then talk to me about going Juco and I was just like, I don't wanna go Juco because at this point in time, Juco had the bad connotation that's like, that's for dumb athletes. They do have a lot of speed. And I'm sitting, which now looking back at it is like, you were a dumb athlete. You weren't dumb, but you definitely were a dumb athlete because you were doing dumb things, which is why you need to go to where the dummies go if that's how you view it. You big dummy. Okay, so after having that happen about mm, five or six times, it began to really set in my head like, oh, um, that 2.3 requirement, that's, uh, uh, that's a real thing. You actually need that? I was like, oh, you actually needed that? <laughs> I, look, NCAA, I didn't know. Uh, so can y'all just go ahead and slide your boy in? And they were like, <gasps> shut your stupid ass up. No, no. I wasn't depressed, but I was definitely discouraged. Because at this point, like, they did pass by. We went to this track meet in New Mexico. One side note, I can give a story time about that later on, but the Great Southwest, classic? Oh, that's a meet meet. That's a meet and greet where you run with your feet. Like, mm, that's a meet. But overall, so we were, so I slid down there. I'm like steady over it, just hitting my little tops consistently. But I'm like, at this point, I was just like, bro, what's the, like, there's no point. I was like, I'm just running at this point just to like catch some doves because it's fun and I love the sport of track and field and I have a passion for it, so I'm gonna run. Oh, wait, I'm not getting any scholarships because uh, you have a horrible GPA. But then this is how God worked, because then God got to work in. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting over there like, okay, what do I do? And then God said, um, you don't need to do anything else. You've done enough. Watch me work. Man, hallelujah. My high school coach, my summer track coach, coach, coach for the blues. He's on the phone with a Juco coach. My brother Brad, brother to this day. My mud brother, drug brother, blood of blood of blood of. He decided that he's gonna go ahead and go the JUCO route, not because he had bad grades, but in order to seek just better opportunities because when you go to school in the Midwest, you tend to only have opportunities to go to only to schools in the Midwest. Not everybody wants to stay in the Midwest. He wants to go, he wanted to run down South. So he was like, all right, I'm gonna go to JUCO first. So I can go ahead and run down South. Dirty South. That being said, he talking to the school going by the name of Coffeeville Community College. He just got done talking to Iowa Central, decided he doesn't want to go there. He wants to go to Coffeeville. The coach literally just at random was talking to my coach and said, I thank you for putting me on this 200 runner, but man, it will really be helpful now that I got this 200 runner if I could get a 400 runner too. Light bulb. He said, man, that's crazy because I got a 400 runner that low key got some jets on him and he has nowhere to go due to his grades. And literally like within the same day, same hour, have my number and everything. Next day, we on the phone. Just Chopping it up like some diced tomatoes. I mean, I'm like, at this point, at this point, I'm practicing my marching. I'm getting my, I'm getting my haircut ready because I'm going to be in the military. Hut one, hut two, hut three, hut four. Because I'm not, I'm not going to school at this point. I was like, man, I was fun, it was fun while it lasted, but um, I was worth going to waste because I'm about to be. Oh, so yes, sir. Like, I, I was, I was really about to just go ahead and go to the military. I was like, man, forget it. I get this call. At this point, I did not care. There was no other schools talking to me anyway, so any school, as soon as he hit me up, I'm just sitting over, Yo, I'm coming, I don't care, what school you go, I, I, I'm coming, I don't, that's fine, I'm coming. Now we talking, we go on a visit, this, that, and the third. He sends my letter of intent over, I sign it, and I officially become a NJCAA JUCO product. The hardest part about actually ending up going to JUCO was the fact that I had literally spent the entire year, when I say the entire year, the entire school year bragging to everybody in the school, classmates, teammates, everybody, oh, I'm going D1, Big Lou, Big Lou going D1, Ultra Instinct Lou, Ultra Instinct Lou going D1, we going D1, baby. To come to find out when it was actually time to, uh, you know, tell everybody where we're going. Uh. 
<laughs> hey Jermaine, where you going? Uh, a Division One JUCO. He was just looking at me like JUCO. JUCO? Oh, the, the deception, the betrayal, man! You deceived me. Someone get this Jigaboo away from me. <laughs> And everybody used to come to me with this same stupid corny joke. Like, bro, used to be so just stupid. Stupid! Uh, hey, Jermaine, man, where you going to school? Where you signed to? I actually just so happened to sign to Coffeeville Community College. <laughs> Coffeeville? <laughs> what do you guys make there? <laughs> Coffee? Ah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, what is your guy's mascot? A bean? <laughs> fight, fight me. Fight me right now. Fight me right now. Which is now going to bring me to the real story of how life is when you get to Juco. I'm talking about the ups and downs, and I'm really about to get y'all hip on the Juco struggle. But y'all got to learn that next time in part two. One more time, ho. Big body bitch, look like Tahoe. Chopper with a stick, look at my low. Yeah, I leave that don't follow. Yeah, I'll pull up uh, on a model. Okay, pull out, get that money, then I go.